In this video, I'm going to show you how to do the perfect throw inside of Adobe After Effects. So let's get into it. Now, before we jump into Adobe After Effects and start editing this, it's really important that we have the right footage. So first of all, you want to make sure your camera is on a tripod so that it doesn't move and make sure your camera is in manual mode, not automatic mode. And then of course you want to go through the process of capturing all your different clips. So the first one is just you attempting the throw. The second one is making sure you get it in. So going a little closer and throwing it in, but don't block anything in the scene. And then the next one is just holding what you were throwing. So if you threw a crunched up piece of paper, then just hold that. Or if you throw a ball, then just put this on a little bit of fishing wire and tape that on and then just hold this in the scene. And then lastly, you need your clean plate, which is just the empty scene. So you're not there and the thing you're throwing is not in the scene either. So that's four video clips to do this effect. Now, once you've got all of those different clips, we can drop these into After Effects and begin the editing process. So as you can see, here is my first video. This is me throwing it and it doesn't go in. So we are just going to go to the layer where it does go in, which should be the bottom layer. Let's drag this up. There you go. This is the layer where it goes in that's when it drops in there. So I'm just gonna cut that bit there. So that is Command, Shift and D to do that cut. And then I'm gonna to go to the layer below, which is the throwing layer, and figure out roughly when that should have landed. So around there. So that's pretty much timed up quite perfectly. So I'm just gonna pull that one clip back like this. And then I'm just gonna go up to the pen tool and I'm just gonna mask around the right side of the frame. There you go. Let's see how this looks. Now that wasn't perfect. I'm gonna to have to get a clean plate to clean that bit up. Or alternatively, rather than getting the clean plate, I could just change the mask. So at this point, I'm gonna create a brand new keyframe on the mask. So go into mask one, new stopwatch. So select the stopwatch icon to create that new point. And then I'm just gonna go back in time and I'm just gonna move this mask over to the right. So I'm just gonna move it up here. Now, when we play that back, you should see we shouldn't have that problem anymore. There you go. That looks really good. Although the problem is you can see the ball comes in from this angle. So in order to fix that, I would just want to go through to the point where it comes through. So around here, we'll go back in time a little bit. And we'll just update that mask to make sure that it is now seen. So I'm just going to create a new point with the pen tool and drag this up to the top. Now let's see if that's fixed our problem. There you go, you can see my hand is now creeping into frame. So again, I'm just gonna move this over. And that's not quite perfect. I feel like it would be a little bit quicker to get there. So I'm just gonna drag this bottom layer over to the left a touch. Sorry, to the right. There we go. I'd say that was about right. This is definitely something I would say you have to do in your example. Just finick it a little bit. Just mess around a little bit and make sure you get it perfect because one or two frames could be the difference of it looking real versus it not looking real. Just before we carry on with this video, I'm going to take a quick break to talk about my Skillshare courses. If you're enjoying these YouTube videos, but you would prefer more long form content, then my Skillshare courses are perfect for you. I have a two hour plus course all about Adobe After Effects and it teaches you everything you need to know to get started and to get familiar with the interface and how After Effects works. So if you're interested and you want to learn more, then please feel free to check the link in the description below. Now back to the video. Now I have to say I've kind of lucked out in my example because the paper ball leaves the top of the frame, you don't actually see it traveling. Now, if you did see it travel, you would need to find a way of joining the first shot to the second shot. So as you could imagine, the ball is going to travel up here and then come back down. So you would imagine it coming up here, but we would need to find a point to join the first clip and the second clip together. And that is why we have this layer. See, what I would do in this example is I would just mask around this paper ball here like this, and then just make sure that mask was following. Or alternatively, you could just freeze frame that layer if you wanted to make life easy for yourself. But as you can see, that mask is there. All I would do then in that example 
is as the first paper ball goes up off screen, so if it comes up here, I would just animate this one in to follow that movement and then come back down. And when the new clip comes in, this clip can finish. So essentially it would go up, the first clip would end, this paper ball would appear, and then it would go down into the next clip like this. So you would follow that journey along. And then of course, once you've added that in, because there's movement, you could turn the motion blur on on that layer and that would help to blend everything together. Let me show you briefly what I mean. So if it was to disappear here, the first clip, I would have the ball here, create a brand new keyframe on position. Then I'd find the point where it appeared again. So it was around there. And then I would just make sure that I had the right animation in between. Obviously this isn't going to be right because it should go higher. So it's really important that you get that animation correct. Make sure that's doing what it needs to do. Make sure again, the mask is nice and tight to that paper ball. So at the moment you can see that background coming through, but if you make that mask really tight and close to the paper ball, then it should help to tie that all together. And then of course you just turn the motion blur back on, on that layer. And you end up with a really perfect trick shot. Of course though, because I threw it off screen, it would actually loop up higher. So there would be more of a loop and there wouldn't be this harsh, really poorly animated job here. But then once that second video comes back in, you could just delete that single layer of the paper ball and you end up with something like that. As you can see, it doesn't look perfect, but with the motion blur applied, it kind of ties that all together. And then of course, because we're inside of Adobe After Effects, we could actually just pre-comp this. So we'll se select all, pre-compose and just press okay. And then we can go into the position. So we'll press P on the keyboard to load position. Then we'll hold option select the stopwatch icon to load up the expression window. Then we're just going to type wiggle open bracket two comma 20. And as you can see, that's just adding a little bit of natural handheld camera movement. Of course, you can adjust the values here so you can change this to 210 if you wanted less movement. That looks a bit more natural. And then to fill in the gaps, we're just going to go into effects and presets and search for motion tile. Then we'll just go output width 300, output height 300 and mirror edges. And that will get rid of those black edges around the video. But there you go. That is how you would go through the process of throwing the perfect trick shot every single time with the help of some filming and editing. So thank you ever so much for watching this video. I really do appreciate your support and hopefully I will see you in the next video. See you there.